what is happening to people. But this morning, I would, I would like to encourage you to, to just pull yourself a little bit and put this scripture and say, For God so loved me, He loved me so much that He gave His Son so that I may be saved, so that I may have everlasting life. And once you, you, you get grounded in that, that God loves me, I am loved by God. It is me that He loves. Amen? Amen? And so then you will be able to, to, to comprehend or to, to put yourself in a position where you know that everything that is happening to you, God sees it and He knows it. And because He loves you, it's not for nothing. You're not in the position of in the place that you are in for nothing. God loves you. It is not that he has forgotten about you. It is not like um, there's something that he cannot do. A commandment of Lazarus. When Jesus finally arrived, Mary, the sister of Lazarus, the sisters of Lazarus, said, Lord, it's too late. If you had come at the time when we were calling you, our brother would not have died. If you had come at the time when we wanted you, this thing would have not have happened. My business would not have died. I would not have had this need for this law. And Jesus really took his time. Because Lazarus was dead for how many days? Four whole days. That means he was kind of stinking right now. If you really think about it, because he was in the grave. He was not in the fridge. But he was in the grave. But regardless of how long and how devastating the situation may seem, when Jesus shows up, when Jesus speaks, all things begin to change. It takes him word. See, with Ulazarus, for example, we would have had just another person being healed by Jesus. But now, we know that he is able to resurrect things that are dead. He is able to resurrect those things that have been dead for a long time. Amen. Amen. If we can comprehend that and know that our God is able and the position that I'm in is the position of somebody who is loved. No matter where I am and how long I've been, I'm in a position where I am loved by God. Amen. And so whatever, because he said in his word, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. So whatever is happening, it is not uncommon. It happens because God will not give you something that you cannot handle. And the Bible says, you will always make a way for your escape. That you might feel like uh, suffocating now. But God said, he, it is in his word. He promises us that, listen, I will make a way for you. I will make a way for you. This will not kill you. This is not the end of you. But I will make a way for you. And that is the kind of God that we said. And, and, and Paul wanted us to know the width, the length, and the, the depth, the height of the love of God. And that it surpasses understanding. That our minds are too small to even comprehend how much God loves us. Because 
if we knew just how much God loved us, we would just, just allow him to just lead us. Because we know that him, he has our best interest at heart. So if he said it, then he would establish it. So I'm going to wrestle with him just like Jacob did until he blesses me. Until I see my breakthrough, I'm going to stick here with Jesus just because um, I'm reminded of a personal situation. But let's leave that aside. Regardless of the situation that is happening, I'm not going to go to someone else to try to make a um, what's this, an Ishmael. God promised Sarah that she would be pregnant in her old age. But because time was not going, time was going, and he thought, she thought, well, you know what? Let me rather give my husband to my servant, which surprisingly he agreed. I was going to get that. <laughs> so that she can be pregnant for her. So she says, Lay with my husband. That is not gonna happen. Amen. Not in my house. Amen. And that's why we end up with the Ishmaels. The ones who are gonna end up being uh, stumbling blocks in our way, so to speak. Because we're trying to make it. We are trying to make it happen. Even though you are supposed to be on a waiting for him. Yes. But it looks like God took too long for Isaac to come. And when you think about Sarah and, and, and also just the, the logic of it all, she thought, God, well, I haven't I haven't had a monthly in in, in a hundred years. So how am I gonna get pregnant? Now take that and flip that on your situation. And think about it. Amen. Amen. And that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. That's another word. God is able to provide. That's number one. He is able to give you strength through the power of His Spirit. God loves you. It is you that He loves. And He wants you to be grounded in that love. So that you are able to even say to the other saints. You know when, when you, you are coming for exams and then you write and after the exams you forget everything because you're just coming in for the exams? That's not what I'm talking about. God here wants us to know so that even after you are able to talk about it, because you have internalized it. It is part of you. You are able to just, when you wake up in the morning and somebody asks you, who is this God of yours? Is the God who loves me. I don't know. Just like the, the, the song of the little children. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh,
encourage you in whichever season that you are in. Oba, go and share your tea. Oba, in the in any situation that you are in, keep being obedient to His word. His word tells us that we should give. God loves a cheerful giver, right? It says, give and it will be given back unto you. It says, take care of my kingdom and I will take care of your stuff. Amen? If you have been doing good, keep doing good. And in due season, you will reap. Because we all have a due season. Each and every one of us has a due season. And let when your due season come, because if you have been, you have not planted, you cannot heal. Amen? Amen? We reap what we sow. And when he says give, you give. When he says serve, you serve. Whatever that he says, know that it comes from the place of the Father who is able to protect and cover you. Amen. Amen. No matter what the fathers on earth have done, he's not a man that he should lie. Amen. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we have our offering in our hand and let us pray for it real quick. Father, we thank you.
message today as we are here we are serving God. See, this is the second title. Um, Joshua is a uh, second in charge to Moses, if you remember, uh, this came from him and he was very interested in knowing God. Uh, very interested in knowing God. The one who says, we must go to the next class, first of all, amen. To the next class, we take on the whole city, see, I'm saying, and who must go to, when we come to that knowledge of him, and uh, we show interest in knowing him. Guess what will happen? We will see all the benefits. That's why David always reminds us that uh, he says that um, uh, you should send me over and forget much of his benefits. Amen. 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 I know that you might not be getting what you desire now or what you want now, but don't ever forget his benefits. Amen. Amen. That he is the one who protects you, he is the one uh, who fill, he fills your mouth with good things, amen. amen, that you take for granted today. So Joshua wasn't very trusted in knowing God and but we don't know what you want. Let's remember, first of all, if we remind ourselves that God called Moses and said, I'm calling you that you will deliver my people. This is our call. It's our calling all of us as the children of God to are here that we will deliver God's people. And God has called us for that. And God did not say it's you. He said, I will deliver my people. He called Moses and said, Moses, come work with me. And I will deliver my people from the hands of the Egyptians. And I believe that today God wants to deliver his people from the hands of uh, whatever is holding them from the bondage from the drugs, from whatever is holding them, God wants to deliver God's people. We are here for that. Well, let's, let's, let's not forget that. Sinners, the song that was on the let us part of it. And Moses went to Egypt, afraid because he committed some crimes according to the laws of the Egyptians. But he went back there, and God said, nobody will touch you. Think about it, you, you commit a murder in that country, and you go, you don't even hide. He just go there and said, God has sent me to deliver the people and nobody touched him because he was protected by God. And he went there to deliver God's people, uh, started the negotiations. You know what I like? If you see that uh, in those negotiations, is that uh, those negotiations were not just any words, but God came true for Moses and he delivered the Israelites. And God showed up, there was God intervention. Who fell out of Kulaka? I have a plan about that to because Moses was able to convince him, but there was power behind Moses. And there were punishments and curses and things that God did, and he forced the hands of Pharaoh. And I believe to me that he will force the hands of whoever is holding our people. Amen. It's not going to be by you convincing words or your utterances or your eloquence. But it's going to be by power because the Bible says it is by power, not by might. It is not by power, not by might, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Right. See, the other man that was on the, uh, was it last week or last week, last week uh, who was celebrating uh, as a church. Uh, and I know it's not in the kind of assumption of Jesus. And after that, we also uh, celebrated the coming down of the Holy Spirit. I know that when we say, we say, more to the Magashe, but. Uh, 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 it's such a good man. I believe that there's something wrong with that song. When the language of Asia is here with us. Amen. 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 The only thing that um, Paul said is, is something that you should desire all the time. Not that the Holy Spirit may come because he is here. He's saying that you may be filled. Look okay, at your neighbor and say that you may be filled. He said, be filled. He is here. Who call the other in armies, but be filled. He said to the disciples, I, I will pray to the Father that he will send the Holy Spirit. He said, He is among us. He was among us. Why are you calling the Because why are you calling the Father to me? And he said that he will be in you. Right now, we call the Father to me, but he will be in you. So he is in us. All we need is being filled all the time, being filled, being filled. Amen. Amen. When we go to God, we go for the feeling. Even the pastor, I'm telling him, he 
get that fuel. You need to refuel, refuel. Even you as a child of God, if you can begin to not fuel your body with the energy, whatever, all the things that you need today, the energy that you get from, you get from food, guess what will happen? You will be hungry and you won't be able to do anything. You need to go and fuel yourself all the time. Eat. That's what the Bible says. And then they what? Live on bread alone. And by the words that come, so proceed out of the mouth of God. So, be filled with the Holy Spirit is like food to us. You know that you cannot do without, any person here cannot, you can do without food. I know, no, 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 no one here can do without food. But, don't look to see yourself and think you can do without His Spirit. You cannot do without His Spirit, of us, right? That's why you need the Spirit. So now, serve God. Joshua understood that I cannot do this as I am second in charge. Moses is, is putting his trust in me. He trusts me that I will continue to serve God. I will continue to be his eyes over this people when he's not here. And he said, I must by all means seek his face. And we know that when Moses introduced the prayer to the people of seeking God, that the people will take their tents and they will. Uh, at, at a certain time, uh, all the Israelites and they will begin to pray to God. And the interesting thing in all of this is that immediately when uh, it said, hey, the God was in the desert and go back to their homes, the Bible tells us that uh, Joshua will live at the longer and longer and longer. You know, there are other pastors that are too returning to our people. I'm going to go to this person, you know what you pray? Um, I know I can point out some people here when we have the night rush. Uh, we did not one minute past eight. Say, say, let's take it out. Amen. But I mean, we cannot do that later. You can, you can no one say that. Amen. 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 Shut up until you are filled and you will move out to the next Amen. And until you are filled. So let's be like Joshua who will linger. And, uh, and if you look at this, there were the great results that he was able to listen to God. And he was able to hear the voice of God. He was able to hear God. Whilst other people did not know anything about God. See, God, I was not doing all of him. See, uh, amen. amen. Um, it's like when you join, uh, uh, um, I know that when you join a uh, company you enter, you want to familiarize yourself with everything uh, that is happening in that company. If you don't know, you are not likely to survive there in that company. So being rooted, you want to be rooted, when you serve God, you can only serve God when you are rooted. How many of you have seen uh, as a as God plants in Kuna in the in a strong? How many of you have seen that? In Kuna Idi, when I go to you know this? Why in Kuna Idi, when I get Ghana, I get rotated? I'm talking about comparing here with the God plants that the man who has done this, who has done that, 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 who has and see how far it grows. The one that uh, limited in this growth, the land is so bad. So we want to talk about that now. You know, the Israelites, the reason why they were shaken in the because they did not know God. They were not rooted in this world. And, and Moses, Joshua, and Caleb, that's why uh, they were the ones who were saying, we are able to do this because they were rooted in the world. Who went to rooted? Who rooted? And he cannot be moved. Yes, I have a shaking a bit, but all rooted. It's all for us. Yes, it's good. But you keep the movement. Amen. Because we are rooted. And you always get your food and your nutrients. That's the word of God. From God, because you are connected to the source. You are connected to the source. The point, the, the plant that is in the point, I go connected to the source. Eh? That's what's going to be in the hands. The idea of one of these nutrients from uh, the soil because it is rooted. The plant, the pot plant, the flower, 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 the
you must take care of it if you don't, it's going to die. But the one that is, uh, has got immunity, I'm going to come back on it. And the other time, you could look at the international about it. Exactly like the book. Because there is no immunity. Amen. You could have a look at the other one. Start on it. You could have a look at the other one. Sometimes, it's not the thing that you have to have to do with it. You must go to the church. Amen. Amen. So when you are rooted in the word of God and you are rooted in God, as well, then I feel it's not true because it's true, is it? But it's a big woman. Amen. 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 You know, if you can leave your God plant for a couple of days, for maybe it's out of feet. Amen. Yeah, it's too feet. <laughs> That's why we must be rooted and in the word of God. And um, which also was rooted in the word of God. He was not shaken like Caleb. Like they were not shaken. When they went, when they were sent by God, then those who were sent to spy the land, they went to spy the land, they came back, and most of them, they were so shaken because they went through the land of God. They then sent God to say, I'm taking you to the promised land. They were not shaken because they knew that God is able to keep his promise, he will take us to the promised land. And others came back, they were so shaken because of what they see. Amen. Amen. So if you don't spend the word of God, I'll show you this one. So I'll try to ask you to do this, which is you. Because you're not rooted in the word of God. Amen. Amen. But if you are rooted in the word of God, you know God and you know that He is able to keep His word. I want us to read from the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Psalms, chapter 1, yes. Uh, this is a very interesting psalm from David here. And uh, if you look at it, uh, it's telling you exactly what is important. We're going to read from verse 23. You may, if you have some time, just read throughout that. It talks about those who are not rooted and those who are rooted. And if we read here, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. It was in the good thing. In the law of the Lord. Let's remember that now. It's all about the law of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit. As we are connected to the Spirit, we Learn from the spirit, the spirit going to the church and that. And said that, and his law, he meditates day and night. He meditates on the law of the Lord. Who is those that he was around him? And day and night, because the Holy Spirit did that night, day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the river. By the river, so forth. But the one that we're talking about is not the point plan, is the one who's planted close to the source, close to the nutrients, close to the things that will keep you going. Mm -hmm. And here we're talking about God. God keeps us going as well. Mm -hmm. if, if you are planted, you, are, you have a, a strong relationship with God, you will not be moved. Mm -hmm. Amen. I could just have shown this because he put it on, like I've said, he said, yes, it's a good teacher, but you will come back to life. And he says that, that brings fruit, that brings forth its fruit in its season. That means you do not fail to be fruitful. Remember, God has commanded us to be fruitful, to multiply the fruitful. Not only, only in procreation terms, but in everything that will be fruitful and that will multiply. It says that you will also shall not wither. Yeah. You may be in that season where the leaves seem to be wither, but you will be renewed because you always get the nutrients and you are connected to God. We're talking about this connection to God here. Now, Joshua and Caleb, they were connected. This uh, is, is, is referring to them that they were connected and that uh, they were producing what they're supposed to produce. And things were going all good for them because they were connected to God. It is all about connection. Uh, to God. And it says that, and whatever He does shall prosper, whatever we do as a children of God, we shall prosper because we are connected to the source. And now we're talking about the Spirit of God that lives in the inside of us. The Bible even says that, um, I know that there are people here who may wonder why we, we don't even need prayer sometimes for the sickness. Because the Bible says that, and the Spirit of God that is in you. Heals your body that is full of illness. Amen. Before, whatever illness shows up, the Spirit has already healed you. Amen. Amen. 
Before anything shows up, before anything is inside, the Holy Spirit has already dealt with that because every inside of us, and if you are like that, and if you who tickle, like we are, we are in God, we are as well. Oh, everything that you need is in Him. So, He says that um, you shall then prosper because you are here, you are led by the Spirit. And uh, when we look at Cain uh, and Joshua, they were led by the Spirit of God. That's why, even in the 40 years they spent in the wilderness, and other people gave up and died. Our and our sisters who don't know what happened because they could not handle the suffering. But Cain and Joshua, they persevered because they knew that God has a great future for them, that they will see the goodness of the Lord. That's why we are in the city. We are in the city. Because I know that the goodness of the Lord I will see in this kind of thing. He says that we have to give it up. We don't give up when we are connected to Him. He sustains us in wilderness. I know that there are people right here who are in wilderness. Remember, which is also that there is not putting you in wilderness so that you may die there or so that you may spend all your life there. He's putting you there so that you may know that a man can only live by bread alone. So that you may learn to depend on him. So that you may take your relationship with him. That's what the Israelites needed to do, but they failed to do that. Amen. So he's putting you in wilderness so that you may learn to depend on him, you may learn that you don't live without him, and that when you go and have all the good things, when you go and begin to build your bad house, and when you go and begin to be in the right place, or you begin to live, who will mark up and be prosperous, and know that uh, it's not your power. It is not your power. Amen. Amen. It is your power. It is not your power. Because it is the Lord. Who gives you ability Amen. to create to whatever, to do whatever you are doing? It is He that gives you ability. So, when we are planted, we are like the, what the scripture describes here. We are planted, we are going to produce fruitful and fruitful. And we want the people of God to be fruitful in every way, to be fruitful in the spirit, to be fruitful uh, socially, to be fruitful natural, to be fruitful in every way. Amen. 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 To be fruitful in every way of the life. That means to produce more fruit. See more than that good way. But we keep up to Sunday the good that way at the end. That we may see improvement every time smaller. Are we not the person that you used to be? It is a promise from God. Amen. It is a promise from God. When Isaac, the Bible tells us that Isaac, uh, when there was a man in the land, and he saw, the only time I come out of that, I think uh, all of us, when there is, when there is not enough, we, we, we want to, 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 to keep instead of uh, planting. But the Bible says that he saw a seed. He didn't saw a seed. He did not eat that seed, he saw a seed. And the Bible says he began to prosper until he began to prosper. That means there was progress and progress and progress. Now the Bible in the book of John chapter 15, I like that scripture because it tells us that we cannot do without God. And it says that well, if, or if we are connected to him, we will be fruitful. We will produce more fruit. And it says that uh, without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. Last week we read from the churches uh, in, uh, in the book of um, Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Uh, there was one church that God spoke to them when he said to them, You think you have a dream, but you have nothing. All that you have can disappear like this if you think you can do without you. All that you have, you have because I'm by your side. If I, if I decide to leave you, you will lose nothing. And you lose everything and you end up having nothing. So let's understand that being connected to God and spend time in the presence of God, it helps us because we'll be like that tree that is planted by the riverside and receive all the nutrients that it needs. And it's healthy. Masakan is so it's basically Zimbabwe plant was very strong so, 
much more of things now to the Lord because I know that I am a conqueror. The Bible says that in all these things we are more than conquerors. So if you want to know God's ways, or if you if, if, if you decide that I want to seek God, to seek His face, you know as well, and the Bible says, we don't have to do any in the morning, I will seek His face, and then at midnight, I will seek His face. So, it is our responsibility that we seek God's face, and when we seek God's face, as well, we are secure. So, to show that. Now, before we read here, let's read from the book of Psalms, chapter. 86 verse 1, chapter 86 verse 1. Moses wants to understand God and His ways. It is our desire that you understand Him and His ways. Caesar's in the Messiah. If we read from the book of Matthew chapter 16, it talks about uh, it talks about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. How his kingdom operates. And it says uh, in my scripture, that you like it says, seek to first the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. What is the kingdom of God? If we, if, if, if we look at the scripture and we look at the, 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 what the kingdom of God is, is the kingdom, the kingdom who are here on earth, but here on earth we are in the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says that. I mean, when we pray, remember when we pray, uh, we have so much of food. Pray that the kingdom will come, his kingdom come. So that means the rule of God or what is happening to us, the spirit of God in the inside of us, is the kingdom of God. So we pray that the kingdom come. Here on earth, isn't it? That's why when we go to a house, uh, the Bible says when we go to a house and they accept Jesus and they are not in Savior, they tell them that the kingdom of God has come to you. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us. That's why it says the first the kingdom of God. Understanding the, the king of the kingdom, how the king operates, and how am I supposed to live in this kingdom? I don't know which uh, kingdom you live in, but um, if you happen to locate and go and live in some kingdom that you don't know, let's say you go live in South, you need to understand how things operate there. You need to understand the principles of that kingdom in order for you to understand to, to live peacefully in that kingdom. I was that because that so because we we come from the world into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of light, we must learn to understand this process of the kingdom of light. Amen. And if we understand the things of this kingdom, we will not miss the benefits that comes with this kingdom. Amen. So that's why when you go and, 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 and pray and uh, Bring people to Christ, you tell them the kingdom of God has come to you, and this is what is going to happen to you. That is, uh, the kingdom of God will set you free from the bondage of the devil. You are no more enslaved today, but you are set free because you are in the kingdom of God. So, Moses sought to understand the kingdom of God. I, I remember when he went to spend time with God, and he spent a lot of time with God when he came back, and these guys were shaking these plants. And these people who were God class, they were going to make themselves the golden cow for the But some of them told people who did so that they can, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's so surprising. And they came back, and these guys, they, they have found another God for themselves. Wow. And most of them spend a lot of time with God. So, uh, the Bible here illustrates. It says that, um, teach me your ways, God. Remember, David said that Moses understood God's ways and the Israelites, they only knew his miracles. Please don't be like that person who only know who take up Christ's senses. You know, not like that was right. We tend to forget sometimes Cloud uh, that if, if uh, you, this is your best case, I'm not going to be here. Amen. You know, even now that we are trying to do an assumption, I feel like you are. I think about it. That these guys, and the Egyptians were pursuing them. And God looked at the Red Sea. You would think that they would never forget that I'm so afraid you are. 
But guess what? They forgot about that. How are they going to see that they were cool? They continued to live their own life. And when another challenge came, they forget about God. They forget about God. All about the from the Egyptians. All that time, the centuries, you're not far about the ruler. So, who is the giver if it was easy to check out what's in the Amen. Who is the giver if it was easy? That's why it's important to go back and ask people to give the blessing that you're doing now. I know that you, if you are going through some things, you, you forget about everything. You know, if you are going to check out what's in the Bible, you can see the Bible. We live by the time you want to do tick up events in the Holy Bank. So, it's not about the things which it was inside. Because, the means as inside, go get some time for granted, and say what is wrong with it. But what is important is knowing Him. Knowing His ways. Now, that's what we're going to ask here. Teach me your ways, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Teach me your ways. I will walk in your truth. And He says that, unite my heart. To fear your name. Teach me your ways that I will walk in your truth. It is our prayer today that you will know his ways, that you will hear when he speaks to you, that you may walk in his ways, that you may be like David. Even sometimes if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, you'll say, Lord, I know that you are here. Because it is all about his presence, it's all about him, it's all about knowing him and not being afraid because God is with you. So David says, teach me your ways. And Moses was the one who was always spending time with God because he wanted to know God's ways. He wanted to know Him. Let it be our prayer today that we know Him. You can't serve the one that you do not know. We serve God because He is God. And because we know his benefits and we know the things as the disciples are that are obvious. And if we read from let's go to chapter 25, the same scripture, chapter 25. You will not last if you do not if you don't know him. Let's learn his systems, how it operates. See you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things shall be added. If we understand his systems and how he operates here. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Amen. Amen. Still, we will not be shaken. Think about, uh, we spoke about this uh, a few weeks back about the life of Paul. And I remember that was a lie. When he went through a lot, he was still committed to God. When he wrote most of the stuff, most of the letters to the natural read to the churches, and he was even more courageous than the guys in prison. They all the guys gave up and they were discouraged. They were not in prison. And the one who was in prison, he was the one who was encouraging them. I know that if you have a relative who's in prison, it's not a nice place to be. You have no freedom whatsoever. And you go and carry the hands out to God. You understand that part of that. Think about it, that he was the one who made it a little bit of a good example. But guys, you cannot give up on this man. You cannot give up on Jesus. Why have you even, even wrote to the Galatians and say, who has been wished you were doing so well? And I hear from the guys who visit me here that now you are doing other things that I did not teach you. He was courageous being in jail because he knew God. Yeah. That was what he was about. So, to my book, how bad is my husband? Who is it? Few years back, a few months back, I was going through this. And I said, But you didn't show me the church, I didn't see that. Yeah. You were committed to God, you were here, you were continuing to bring people to church. Mm -hmm. But I will know that you are your church. In a way, I don't think it says, I will show you. Amen. See, I'm going to answer that you should know what was the Because what are the people that are not seeing you? Amen. We have joy in the Spirit, joy in Him. I want that to understand because the joy is in Him. It's not in the things. Amen. The life that He gives is not in the things. When He said the eye of God, that you may have life, and I tell you about that we live in the W and the U and I. Because I was glad that you will be here 
and then the child said, and then look who is that I know how much I say. I'm not so happy. No, it's not in the things. Yeah. To us, the Bible says, it's not those things. It's the existing good children. Yes. And it's extra. But we have our joy in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's why the Bible says, we ask us for nothing. But in prayer and supplications, and your request, we make known to God. And the peace of God. Because we are our full stand for the peace that you know, that passes all understanding. Amen. 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 You go to the whole cell and begin to run the whole cell because you've got the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to excuses for going through some things. Guys, you can go to your home. I'm going to come into the whole cell. I'm going through what we're going to do. We are all going to We are all going to the very of the shadow. Let's just understand that our God 
is enough for us. Amen. That's why we go to hear like Moses. You know, the closing, what I like about uh, Moses uh, is that he will go to God all the time. He will go and spend time with God. In fact, when you don't ask the physical to show us about him, uh, we'll be better people. That's what we want here. That's what we want. Sephora, when you spend time with God, spend time with the Holy Spirit, you'll be a different person. And the Bible tells us if you have some time, you read from the, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 34. We're going to read so maybe just two verses there. If you read that, you understand the whole 34. We're going to start from 34. Chapter 34, verse 34 and 35. It says, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord, whenever Moses did what? Went in before the Lord. It is not pleasure of Moses, it is easy to find straight on that. Why we have to bring ourselves before the Lord. We go before him. See, I always say, as he said, whenever he will to speak to the Lord, to speak with him, he will take the way of so if you read from the beginning uh, the scripture tells us that Moses will go spend time with God and when uh, Ebuya spending time with God people will run away they will be able to look at his face and he didn't know what was happening what's wrong with these people including Joshua and Aaron at the time who was uh, one of the leaders there there was a clash when Moses came they could not look at his face because his face reflected the Shekinah glory of the glory of God. And uh, he had to hide his face, put the veil, the veil, so that uh, he can speak to them. That's what we want from you as a sinful. When you feel to the spirit of God, you know when you feel to the spirit of God, this is what is going to happen. To you, this is what is going to happen to all of us that you will feel the presence of God. I want to show the presence of God, not your worry, not what you are going through. You think things were better for Moses? No. People were rebelling, and people were so disappointed in Moses because they were building up God's for they were rebelling against God, they were just not nice. Company. They were not such a nice company. But he went spend time with God. When he came back, the reflection in his face was the presence of God. So this is what must happen to us. It doesn't matter what is going on in your life. The must be that filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and it's overflowing, you will bring change in this community. Will bring change to the people. Confident, I want you to be confident of this very thing that he is 
say he. Don't you ever put your trust to the one who never promised. But it says he who has begun. Don't you come and say it's the he who has begun the good work. That is good work that is going on in your life. Come to the zone shape. Oh, Zagala, you have many holy rock. That is good work. It says he who began the good work, he who began. Just cooperate with him. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit. Don't you grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit because he is the one who began the good work in you. And he will complete it. He will complete Allow him to complete it. Kill him and Joshua. Leave an open in the world. After 40 years in the wilderness, they want the other person to say, no, this is not going to happen. It's never going to happen. But they had this hope that the one who began the work of delivering us from the hands of the Egyptians, the hand of Pharaoh, is able to finish the work and take us to the land that he has promised. And take us to Canaan where he promised us. He is able to do exceedingly about above all. So he is the one who has promised. So if you don't hear anything that we are saying today, the one who has begun the good work in you, if you have given your life to Jesus as the Lord and Savior, that's the beginning of the great work. That's the beginning of giving life to you. That's the beginning of saying you will be ahead of the team. You will be above and not be good. He has begun the work and he will complete the work. It's not closing. Don't you ever believe the lies of the devil who says that it's never going to be complete. It's not going to be complete this way. He is going to complete the work. Your future is better than the past. I want to tell you today, Pastor Lange, that the better days are not behind us, they are ahead of us. Don't be like the Israelites who believe that you can have the past, the past days. When there is nothing to do with where you are going, yeah. as long as you allow God and say, God, I'm going with you. Because you know that God promised that the future will be better. That's why He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Because of the Lord of Freedom, that I will give you a better future. Better days are ahead of you. Amen. Believe that, believe that. Because the one who began the good work, He will complete it. The one who began the good work for us here at Rock in He will complete it. In this great city of Cape Town, I'm saying this again, Pastor, in this great city of Cape Town, I know that at the present time we see the enemy. He is like, I'm willing, but he's not willing. He doesn't know what God has in store. He doesn't know the enemy. He has no clue that God is raising among us as a church right here in Cape Town. The churches, the kingdoms, the Samsons, the all the, 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 the giants would fall. We know that his race and deal is right here. And that's the, the Philistines that you are saying, the bigger race that you are saying, the, all these, the Jephusites that you are saying, that are that seem to destroy the state, are not going to survive because when those giants, when those judges are coming out, they will be changed like never before in the city. Amen. We will open our eyes and be like the Egyptians that were chasing the Israelites. We will see them no more. Amen. It is a promise to the city of We will go to hide our everything. See, we are going to Sababa. Sababa in this city that God has promised us. This is the stage of the promise. We are not going to hide, but we are going to walk in our streets because God will be dealing with all these Philistines, the Amnon, the Midianites. He is dealing with them in the name of Jesus. Amen. As every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray. I'm praying for you. As I pray for those who find themselves in the wilderness, you are staying in such a dark place that I have no hope. Remember that the one who began the work. They will complete it. Just believe. Believe. Don't give up. David says that if I was just a person, I would have given up. But I know that I will see the goodness of the Lord. You will see the goodness of the Lord. God promised His goodness. He promised that you will have a bright future. You will
will have a better future. That's what God promised. I want to pray for you. I know that there are those who are so discouraged. I want to pray that you have a good share. Jesus said, in this world you have tribulation, but you have a good share. Because you will overcome. And he says that in all those things, you are more than conquerors. You will be like David, have nothing but the power of the name of Jesus. That's why he said, I come to you. I'm, I don't feel like I'm ready. I don't have all. I did not even train for this. I did not even get myself ready for this. But I know that I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. This is what we're going to do. The time to look at us and say, you, you did not even prepare for this, but look up to you in the name of the Lord. That's what you're going to do as a child of God. You will go to them in the name of the Lord and begin to conquer. Fear not, child of God. Don't be afraid because God is with you. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you.
we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, before you go, will you give God a big hand? As you are going, please don't, don't go like the one who is defeated. Walk like the one who is overcoming. Amen. Amen.